Dabla Pasoka da 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 le masoka da 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 da. Ya de bla pasoka da hasian de ribeke shandi bahasoke de bili. Shada bla pasoka da 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 da. Shada bla pasoke de bashian de 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 de. There is power in your name. So lift our hearts in praise. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. So let us see. At the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Jesus only. It's you that I see. Let us see the center of it all. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. Only you, Jesus. It's you that I see. There is power. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. One more time, sing with us. Say, at the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Nobody else is worthy. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are higher, higher. Shout out, Lord, my soul, can you not see? You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. Jesus. 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 The center of it all is you that I see. Is you that I see. Good evening, mommy. Uh, we 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 have our fingers crossed waiting for you. Pardon me with the network. 
um when it's buffing like that it's 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 it has its own mindset but don't worry and good evening to you all god bless you for being here with me i'm a bit early but god bless you for joining me wherever you are just let's lift our voice and begin to bless the name of the lord Sheila, God bless you for being here. Pastor Patrick, God bless you. Timmy, God bless you. Tonight is going to be a bit brief because of our program that we have from tomorrow. So just stick with me. Let's just go in the word and pray for a minute. And I salute you all, men and women of God, being with me tonight. I just want you to lift up your voice and let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. If you know how to speak in the spirit, why don't you just begin to pray in the spirit and just acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let him have his own way tonight in our midst. I promise you, your life is never going to be the same. Like always, the word of the Lord is, is, is always straight on point. I cannot believe sometimes the things that we receive on this platform. So as you are here with me, why don't you lift up your voice and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us tonight. Have his own way tonight in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your presence in our midst tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you are here with us, O oh Lord. I thank you that you are going to speak to us, O oh Lord. We cannot do nothing unless it is given to us from above. So let your will be done as it is in heaven, Father. At the center of it all, it is you that we see in the name of Jesus. Let my son the Hassian de Bekeshande Bahasoka da Badaba. It is not because of what we have, but because of your mercies, because of your grace. Ashende Bahasoka da Blapasian de Bekeshande Baha. Rade Blapasoka da Basian de Bekeshande Baha. Rade Badaba. Let my son the Hassian de Bekeshande Baha. La Masson the Hassian de Yade Basson the Hassian de Shande Bakada Blapasson the Hassian Dam. Ye de badaba ya da basian de de be kishan de 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 le masoka da badaba in the mighty name of Jesus I just feel in my spirit that we we should pray you know in this season there is one thing that I have realized that it is difficult to pray in this season so very difficult to pray so when you come into the place of prayer or you meet some people who are praying just 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 pray. If you just open your mouth and pray, Bible says that you open your mouth and I, the Lord, I will fill it. So let's just begin to pray. If you really know how to pray in the spirit, just open your mouth and begin to pray. If you find it difficult to pray, just ask the Holy Spirit, give me the utterance, help me to pray. Because in this season, you need, you, apart from all the things that you might need, what we really need is prayer, praying more. So just begin to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let's just pray in the spirit for a few minutes. In the name of Jesus, that is what i sense in my spirit let's just pray in the name of jesus heavenly father we pray we come into your throne room of grace in the name of jesus the name that has been given to us the name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of the father Jesus, 
Rande Bakada Blapa, Rada da 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 le maso kada bada ba le mason de hesiande ya de baso kada ba siande de beke shande ba hasonda aya da baso kere be siande de 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 aye de ba siande da boko shande de 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 le maso kada ba ha ye de ba siande de beke shande de 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 we bind every spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus we cannot afford not to pray in this season asha da 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 le maso kere be de be every spirit of laziness we cast you aside in the name of Jesus you will not have power over the children of light in Jesus' mighty name. We will arise like warriors that we are and pray in the name of Jesus. La masoka da bahasiande. We will not be lazy in the name of Jesus. We will not be content with with five minutes and ten minutes prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Ye de bosaka da baha. Le masiande de bekeshande bakada plapa. For in this season you are you are you are looking for people that will stand in prayer. Tonight I pray. I stand in the gab, oh Lord, and I pray for the spirit of prayer on your children in the name of Jesus. Everyone who is finding it difficult to pray in this season, I pray and I ask for your spirit of prayer for them in the name of Jesus. Anoint us with your spirit of prayer. Aye de basiam de de beke shan de bakada bla pasonda hasianda le mosam de he ya de basoka da basiam de de beke shan de bahasonda ha la masoke de badaba aye de basiam de shada bla pasoka da badaba le masiam de de beke shan de beke de bla pa la masoka da badaba le masiam de de beke de be ya de badaba darkness can never prevail over light a sham da 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 le masoka da bahasiam de so we will arise in prayer we will arise in prayer we shall arise Rise in prayer in the name of Jesus. We cast down every spirit of heaviness. Asham de 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 le masoka da ba da ba ha. Ye de bosiam de sham de ba kada bla po. Rada ba soke de be he. Ya de ba sonda hasiam de. Ya de ba siam da 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 le masoka da ba ha. La masiam de de be ke sham de 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 de. Your word says we should pray at all times. We should pray without ceasing. Asham da 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 le masoka da ba da ba. Aye de bosiam de de be ke sham de 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 de. May we arise in prayer. May we arise and take on our mantles of prayer in the name of Jesus. May we be in position, oh Lord Jesus. Aye de basoka da basiam de de beke shan de 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 de. Rada bla pa soka da ba da ba le basiam de de beke shan de 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 de. Every spirit of flesh. Every fleshly attitude, atti, every fleshly attitude, every fleshly things that always makes it difficult for us to arise in prayer. Father, from today we pray and we ask for forgiveness. Forgive our weakness, O oh Lord. Forgive our weakness in the name of Jesus. Anything that is hindering us, O oh Lord, to become what you have called us to be. Shade basoka da baha. Le masiande de beke shande de de de. Le masoka da ba da ba. Raba da ba le masoke de be de be Shia da bla pa soka da 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 Le mason da hasiyan de Aye de ba siyan de de be ke shan de 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 Le masoka da bla pa Raba bla pa siyan de de be ke shan de be de be Ye de ba soka da ba hasiyan de de be ke shan da ba hasoka da bla pa In the name of Jesus La ba soka da ha Le ba son da hasiyan de Shia de bla pa soka da ba la pa Le masiyan de de be ke shan de 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 Nobody will abort their vision Nobody will abort anything that is due them in this season. Whatever thing that you have ordained for your children oh Lord, let it be secured in Jesus' name. Some of you, you have come to the place of birth but you have no strength because you think you are tired in the spirit. Tonight, I pray that the Lord will anoint you with the gift of prayer, with the spirit of prayer, that you will arise and pray in the name of Jesus and push out your child and push out your promise and push out your vision. In the name of Jesus, let my soka da baha every tiredness in the spirit. I pray for strength. Let the spirit of strength baptize us, the spirit of might. La my soka da baha sande ke de blapa. Let my son da hasien de shande baha. La my soka da basi ande de beke shande de 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 de. Rabada bada. Let my soka da baha. 
Yade Badaba, Le Maso Kerebe, Shiam de Rebeke de Blapa, Rob of the Brabant, Le Mason de Haciendi, Shah de Blapa, Siam de Rebeke Shan de Bacada Blapa, Le Mason de Haciendi, Ayede Badaba, Le Maso Kerebaha, La Maso Kadabaha, Le Bosiandi, Shah de Blapa, So Kadabaha, Siam de Rebeke Shan de Bacada Blapa, Rade Blapa, Le Maso Kerebe, Shiam de Rebe, Ayede Basun de Hacienda, Le Maso Kerebe, the Holy Spirit, Ashanda da da da, touch your people in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are at the sound of my voice, anoint them with the spirit of prayer. Some of them, do not let them sleep. Give them no rest until they stand in prayer, until they travel. For lives are connected to you. Until you stand in prayer, you will not see the change you want to see. For your weapon is prayer. Your weapon is prayer. In this season, our weapon is prayer. Ashande baha sokada baha. Le masiande de beke shande baha. Le masokada bada ba. Le masonda hasiende. Shada bla ba sokada baha. In the mighty name of Jesus. Aye de ba sokada ba siande de beke shande ba kada bla ba. In the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise and the honor. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give you all the praise. I honor you, Lord. I thank you, I thank you, and I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are here. We thank you for the privilege to come into your presence once again to hear what you have for us. We pray that Lord Jesus, you speak to us, reveal the hidden things to us. In the name of Jesus, speak to our need. Lord, guide us, give us the wisdom that we need to move on to the next level of our lives. We give you praise. We honor you, Spirit of the living God. Take up absolute control of this service in Jesus' name. Nothing of me and all of you. Thank you for your presence, Heavenly Father. And I thank you for ministering angels, angels that have been assigned for this time. I thank you that your angels have been going to be sent into the homes and the lives of people to bring them answers right now in Jesus' mighty name. I give you all the praise and all the honor. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. 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 Thank you all for being with me. My sis Sheila, thank you. I can see you today. God bless you. Akosia, God bless you for being here. Obaya, don't go anywhere. Jackie, stay with me. And um, I'm going to share a word of God that we're going to pray. I have another program, so I'm hoping not to take too much of your time. But before I dive into the word today, um, as you can, you are all aware that we have our first program, our first convocation. Hey, from tomorrow to Sunday, and um, all that I can say is I am I am excited in my spirit because I believe that yeah jackie i believe that god had something for us because if he's saying that if it is you lord bid me to come it means that there are secret things that he is going to reveal to us for us to achieve and to go to the next level that he wants us to in this season you can see that the uncertainties are too much there are so many things that are going on in the in the spirit realm so many things that are going on physically that you only need the counsel of God to tell you where to go, what to do, who to meet, and connect you divinely. And so this is the instructions of the Lord. He is asking us to come into his presence because he has something that he wants to say to us. And so I will say to you, do not miss these, day, these three days for anything. I have my own mother who is going to be ministering to us on the Saturday, but I believe in the anointings of these two women that are going to minister each and of, each, each of the days. They have their own personal relationship with God. And I have, I have known some of them for a very long time, and I know what God is using them to do in this season. Hello, Auntie Sandra. Good to see you here, Apostle Ado. God bless you for joining me. 
I know what God is using them to do in this season. So please join me these three days and I promise you that your life is not going to be the same. And when you are going, please prepare your offering. If there is something I believe in giving, I believe in sowing. If even nobody sows into their lives, I know I will, I will bless them personally. But I want you to join me and let us bless them after this program because you see, ministering it's i'm not in a church or anything but i believe that when people give themselves or they, they some virtue come out of them and they bless you, you also give them something and when they are they are enjoying the blessing you have blessed them with they will keep on blessing you and also praying for you so sow your seed in these three days and whatever thing that we get we will bless them with it and I know that in it will return a hundred folds for you as well. And so that is the announcement. Please share the flyer, invite somebody. And as it, I'm also saying this, you can please share this broadcast with somebody. Invite it in, in your messenger. Send it to a friend to join in. And it's going to be a blessing. As I said, I'm not going to take too much time today. We're going to study something in Genesis chapter 32 that I found so interesting. And... We will stand on it and we will pray because the Holy Spirit laid something on my heart about three pray, um, prayer topics that we're going to pray with. And I know that as you pray that, you're going to see results because I believe in results. If you pray, if you read the word and it doesn't work, then there is no need, excuse me, there is no need for you to keep on believing. But when you align your will under the will of God and you know that this is the mind of God and you stand on it with the word and you pray, you will see results. And so that is what I believe. Yeah, last week, God willing, we, we stood on the word of God and we prayed. And I know some people had seen tremendous um, answers and blessings upon what they stood in to pray. And so I strongly believe that in this time, in this season, nothing beats than knowing the mind of God for your life and standing on his word and reminding him that this is what you have said and this is what I believe and see what he will not do for you. And so I'm going to read something from Genesis chapter 32. And we all know the story of Jacob that he, lead, he left his father's home after he cheated on his brother Esau and went to his father to take in the blessing. You see, as I was studying, it just, it just, I, 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 it's, it wasn't the fault of Jacob to cheat his brother Esau of his blessing. Please stick with me. Because you see, Jacob did not even know what was going on until his mother prompted, prompted him that your dad is going to give the blessing to Esau and I want you to go give him the food that he requested and let him pray for you. When Jacob was scared and he said, what if my dad, my father finds out that I am not Esau? What is going to happen? What is the curse that is going to come on me? The mother said, let every curse come upon me. And so it wasn't the fault of Jacob to just even go to deceive his dad for the blessing of Esau. His mother made sure that what God has told her when those children were in their womb should come to pass. Little did Jacob also know that in the council of Jehovah, in the books of the Almighty God, he had already ordained that Jacob will be above Esau. And so whatever thing that was going on, whatever, however the story of Jacob was going on, it was just in alignment. It was just in fulfillment of God, what God has already planned before the foundation of the earth. Why would I, what am I, what is the Lord saying to us tonight? There are a lot of things sometimes it doesn't make sense when you are going through them. There are a lot of things you can just go back and just analyze and ask yourself what is really happening i just can't seem to to get a grip of what is happening to me why is it that i'm moving from one 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 difficulty one challenge to another why is it that it seems that whatever thing that i touch i have to struggle to get certain things that has to come my way why is it that you have so many questions so many whys 
And sometimes I feel like our life is like Jacob. Because you see, the story of Jacob is such that even when, after um, his father blessed him and he moved, his mom told him to go to his, um, his brother, Laban. When he went there, he didn't go with anything. Jacob just went because he was fleeing from Esau. He didn't go with nothing. His, his father was, was very rich. Isaac was very rich, but yet Jacob went with nothing to Laban. And he says that for seven years, I lived, uh, 14 years, I labored for my wives and I wept for you. All this while you kept on cheating me. But you see, when God remembered or when God's time was right to bless Jacob, he blessed him beyond his own imagination. He blessed him with cattle. He blessed him with oxes. He blessed him with every single thing, a double portion of whatever thing that he has worked for Laban. When you read the Bible says that when he decided that he needed his own, God gave him a kind of wisdom for him to multiply his cattle and his oxen and all, all the animals that he was looking after. Why am I telling you this? I am telling you this to let you know that the things that you do not understand, the things that you are going through that is above, sometimes you just can't put your, why are things the way they are? I am here to tell you tonight, they are all in the will and in the counsel of the Almighty God. Nothing surprises him. Before he formed you, the Bible says he had already predestined you. He had already written everything that is, con that is going to happen. It is in his book. So nothing surprises God. There are certain things that you will go through. It will take the grace of God. It always does take the grace of God, not for you to lose your mind. But if you are still here, it should tell you that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I don't know what, where this is going, but I'm believing the Holy Spirit is ministering to somebody. You see, when I was studying this book, this story of Jacob, it took me to Galatians about Paul. And I realized that Paul and Jacob has the same kind of ministry. They had the same kind of calling upon them. How God called them. How God called Paul. So who became Paul? It is like the same thing that Jacob also had to face to be called Israel. You see, the Bible says in Galatians, Galatians, Paul tells his story and he says, when I was called, it amazes me. Let me let me just read a portion of what it, um, Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. This is what Paul said. He says, for do I now persuade men? No, verse 15. Sorry, verse 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. And it meant I, I was asking the Holy Spirit, how did, how, how come that when God, Paul says in the, in the one, he says, God knew me from my mother's womb. And he set me apart so that I would preach to the heathens. Yet when we know the story of Paul, all that we knew about him was somebody who was zealous. When you read the, the Galatians chapter 1, the Bible says he was zealous more than his fellow. He was, he was, he, he, he had a zeal, a kind of zeal to do the Lord's work. Although he was not doing it in the right way or how God really wanted. He was doing it according to his will, according to his desire. He thought he was doing the right thing. But what amazed me was the fact that Paul himself could say that God knew me in my womb. Meanwhile, all these years, the only thing that Paul was doing was persecuting the church. Hallelujah. All that Paul was doing was that he was killing saints. He was there when they were stoning Stephen. He was the one who was um, imprisoning the Christians. But he said, God knew me in my mother's womb and set me apart. My dear, my brethren, listen to me tonight. God knew you 
brother god knew you akoshia god knew you and he said i have written your name in the palm of my hands mami foshia he says there is nothing that you will go through that will change my mind concerning your life he knew you in your mother's womb. He placed you there. Among all the spams that were swimming, that came from your daddy. It was, the only, it was only you who could come out in this time. And this is what the Lord is telling us. He is saying that, hey, there is nothing that you are going to go through that is going to change my mind concerning you. There is nothing that will happen that the enemy will throw at you. That will make me change my counsel concerning your life. Whatever I have purpose to do is what I will do. You only trust me. And then in Galatians chapter 1, Paul, Paul asks and he says this powerful, that blessed me last night. He says that, and they glorified God in me. They saw me and they saw what God has done in my life. And all that they could do was to give glory to God. What all the things that you are going through in this season, whatever thing that you have went through to this time, all that at the end of the day, people will see you and give glory to God. Because they will be wondering, how come this person has his mind intact after all the things that he's gone through? How come that this person has not gone crazy yet? How come aside all the things that have been throwing at her, he is still standing strong? How come he is not getting any help from anywhere, from nobody, but yet every day he is smiling, every day he is laughing? This is what the word of the Lord says. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 24, And they glorify God in me. They glorified God in me. They glorified God because of what you are going through. They glorified God because they knew that God had been your strength. They glorified God because they knew that God had been your healer. They glorified God because they knew God has been your Jehovah Jireh. He is the one who has been providing for your needs according to his riches in glory. They will glorify God because they knew and they saw you. They saw you when you had nothing. And they have seen you now, what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. And they will glorify God because of you. Do not despise your testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do not despise the things that you are going through. Because your experiences are what will qualify you for the next promotion that is coming from God. If you have not gone through anything, sometimes you might not experience a dimension in God. But when all things, all hell has broken loose and you have gone to your closet and the only person or the only thing that you know you can trust is the presence of God. And you will cry unto him and he will come unto your aid, Hannah. And he will say, my daughter, I have seen your affliction and I have come. And I will prove your enemies wrong, Hannah. I am talking to you. God is going to surprise you in this season. He says, I am at the door knocking. At the door of your heart knocking. If you will only trust me, Hannah. If you will only trust me, you will see what I am going to do. I will blow your mind. I will blow your mind and let all your accusers, people that are laughing behind you, I will make them change their mind. They will glorify me because of what I'm going to do in your life. And I bless you, God. I, I tap into that blessing in Jesus' name. You see? <laughs> we are back to Jacob. <laughs> Jacob then decided that he was going to move from his uncle, um, uncle Laban's house. And this is where I want you to pay really good attention because this is our, our prayer tonight. You see? When Jacob decided that he's going to move out, even when he decided that he was going to move out with his family, everything that he had was legal. He had worked. He had toiled for everything. But yet when he decided to leave Laban's house, the Bible says he even called his wife in the field. He did not call them in the house. It was on the field. He said, you know, now... I have gone, I have gone fat. I have so many things and I want us to move. And we will move in the night. 
He did not even say to it them to them in the house. You see, sometimes you have to be strategic in how you give information. You have to be strategic how you let people know the things that are going on in your life. It's not every decision that you let people know. It's not everything that you are doing that you let other people know. There are certain things you need to learn to keep it. Learn how to discern even the hearts of men. Because my darling, there are a lot of people who laugh with you and smile with you. But if God will reveal the intent of their heart to you, you will be surprised. And I learned in a very young age that sometimes some people, your friends, your family members, even in their hearts, they are okay with you, but they do not really wish you well. And it becomes a spirit that fights against certain things that concerns you. So sometimes learn how to hold your peace. Learn how to keep certain things to yourself. Those who know me will know that I am somebody, it is very difficult for me to discuss certain things. Unless I have tested and I have tried. It is not easy for me to, to open up like that. And that is sometimes some of the, the things that you need to ask God for. That God help me to keep certain things. There are, it's not everything that I need to talk about. It's not everything that I need to discuss with my friends. Because the very person that you are discussing that with. He might be the very same spirit that is going to fight against your progress. And that is for somebody. And so the Bible says he called, he called his wife to the field. And then he said, I want to leave. And we are going to leave in the, even in the night. But you see, when they were leaving, I'm just picking some points. I just want to, the Holy Spirit just drew my attention on. I'm just, when you get the time, read the whole story, the 31 and the 32. And then when they were leaving in the evening, they left. Laban was not at home at that time. And then some days later, the Bible says that his servant alerted him that Jacob has left with his family and everything that he owed, and he chased after him. The Bible says that when he chased after him and he met him, before the night that he, 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 he would see Jacob, the Bible says when he slept, the angel of the Lord visited him and he said, this is a man that you should not touch. This is a prince of God that you should not touch. Tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus, by the reason of this word, that any person that is planning evil, any person that is conniving, any person that is not saying anything good, may the angel of the Lord visit them in their dreams and warn them concerning you in Jesus' mighty name. And anything that is also due you in this season, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, by the reason of this word that we are studying, that the Lord himself will cause them to release whatever thing that it belongs to you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the angel of the Lord visited Laban and he gave them instructions. Do not touch your, the anointed of the Lord. You are the anointed of the Lord. And sometimes when you are reading the word of the Lord, just take it as your own. Personalize it and say, Lord, as you did for Jacob, I am also saying that nothing will touch me in Jesus' mighty name. Confront those people that in their beds that are planning evil against my life. My boss, that is not giving me peace. Lord, visit them. Let your angel visit them and know that I am the anointed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so in the next morning, when Laban saw Jacob, he dared not touch him because God had warned him in the dream. Do you remember it was, this, it was the same angel that warned Joseph, Mary's uh, betrothed, when Joseph, the one who was betrothed to Mary, and he said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child that he is carrying is from the most high God. It is the same with you. It was the same with Jacob. The same angel. And so it is the same angel. That is the kind of ministry angels. They are called ministerial angels, ministers. They are called to minister to the heirs of salvation. So when something is troubling you, I am giving you power points in prayer. When you are praying, somebody is troubling you. You take the word of the Lord. You said the angel that visited 
Joseph and told him to keep Mary because the son he was carrying was a child of God. The same angel that visited Laban. I am sending the same angel to my tormentors. Those people that do not want me to have peace. May the angel of the Lord visit them in Jesus' name. Let that be your prayer. Anyone who torments you, anyone who decides not to give you peace, you send the word of the Lord to them. You need not fight. This is the Lord's battle. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You only need to stand still and have faith in the word of the Lord. And then he says, when he saw them, they made an agreement. They made an agreement. He says that, hey, I have worked for whatever thing that I have now. Your children, I worked for them 14 years. All these cattle and all these, I have worked for them. And they agreed because God had already spoken to Laban and they agreed they said I will not harm you I will not come and fight you and they made that agreement but you see there was another kind of struggling that is why the other time I said that anytime you experience victory don't be complacent in your victory don't only spend so much time in, in rejoicing in your victory because anytime victory comes there is another thing ahead of you there is another battle yet to be con conquered there is another battle right rolling his head so anytime there is victory don't be so comfortable in your victory when you rejoice when you thank god be on your guard stand still and do not doze off. Do not be tired in praying. Do not be tired in reading your word. Because just then when you are being comfortable, the enemy is there planning something against you all over again. So do not be comfortable when God has given you victory. And this is what the Bible says again to continue. He says, and then when he had parted with Laban, the Bible tells you and me that when he did, then he realized that he had to face his brother Saul, Esau. And he was afraid. When you read the verse 31 of Genesis story, Genesis 32. It is so amazing how the Bible kept on stressing how afraid Jacob was of Esau. He was so afraid that even the Bible says in the verse 4, look at how he addressed himself when he knew he was going to meet Saul. He, look at, he said in the verse 4, 32 verse 4, and he commanded them, he was sending his servants to meet Esau. This is what he said. And he commanded them saying, thus, thus shall ye speak unto my, my Lord Esau. He was calling his brother, my Lord my lord Esau, thy servant jacob jesus christ thy servant jacob you see this is what the lord wants to tell you don't let situations and the things that you are going through make you address yourself less than what god sees you i hope somebody catch this in your spirit sometimes we are going through certain things it is just for a season but we let our guards down we let the pain that we are going through we let our circumstances dictate how we should present ourselves we let our circumstances determine what the words that comes out of our mouth i am despised i i i, I don't feel i don't feel comfortable to do this how can i do this how can i do that he says, my, your servant, my Lord Esau, and my servant, thy servant Jacob. But in the sight of God, Jacob was the prince of the Lord. He was the one in whom God himself was going to choose his own people. He was the pillar. But look at what he was saying because he was afraid. Today, I address with the word of the Lord every single, every seed of fear in your life. That God did not give you the spirit of fear. He gave you the spirit of love. He gave you the spirit of power. And he gave you the spirit of sound mind. Do not be afraid. I am not saying there are situations that will come that you will not be afraid. But when you are afraid, remember who is on your side. Remember that the Lord has called you. Remember that the Lord has ordained you. Remember that the Lord has equipped you for this season. There is nothing, nothing that you are going to go through that is going to change the mind of God concerning you. Be careful the things that you say when you are going through pain. Be careful the things that you say when you are going through difficult times. There is something that blessed me this week I was, as I was listening to a man of God. And he said, 
There is one thing that Christians, we forget to do. And we always forget ourselves. That keep the confession, keep the promises, keep the prophecies that God has given you. You see, the things that God has given you is such that because he is unmovable, he is faithful to his word. His word is not going to change. His promises concerning your life is not going to change. But the very moment you go through a pain, you go through some situations and challenging times, and you keep on changing your confession, you are not confessing what God wants to do. You are not saying you are are not aligning your will and your thoughts and your confessions to the will of the father what did the bible says he said we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word the word of our testimony the word of our testimony god has done this and i know he will do it again sometimes it's difficult for you to confess what god has done it is difficult for you to read the word and say god i believe in your word but that is exactly where he wants you and i to learn tonight that when things are difficult do not change your confession that is when you need to say lord i trust you although it is painful but i know that you will pull me through although you have done this before i remember you put him into remembrance when i was going through difficult these difficult times i know how you came through for me that is your confession he says confess my word confess what i have done before confess them put me into remembrance one time he said to the israelites the things that you have said that i have been hearing the things that you have said that has been coming in front of me that has been a memorial in my presence these are the same negative things i the lord i would do for you so if god is saying that the things that you have been saying is the same thing that i'm going to do for you why don't you change your confession why don't you say god i trust you why don't you say i see myself coming out of this i know i am healed i know i am healed i know i am healed i know i am whole i know i am well why don't you say those things thank you holy spirit and so when he made that confession, the Bible keeps on there about he, Jacob being afraid. The Bible stressed it like six or so times in only the verse 31. He was so afraid of Esau. And the Bible says that when his servants went to meet Esau and they came back, they told him, they gave him this report. Your brother says he's coming to meet you. And he had 600, 600 men with him. Hey, an army coming to meet me. Remembering the, the evil that I have done, what I have done against Esau, taking his birthright. And his heart left him. He he had he had he he had nothing. But this is what I want to say to you. Hashem when those confessions those reports come that is the time i want you to rem remember remember who you are when those things because you see the bible has already told us that the devil the enemy he comes only to steal to kill and to destroy anytime you see these things you see the enemy at work and so the Bible already telling us this. Anytime you hear a negative report, anytime you receive a report that is not of the Lord, that is when you need to remember who you are. That is when you need to remember the word that God has already spoken concerning your life. Because you see, the enemy will always come to challenge what God has already spoken. He says, I will never do anything unless I reveal it. And so he will reveal it. Sometimes you sense that something good is coming your way. Sometimes you can even perceive that, mm, I believe that God is doing something. And all of a sudden, some report starts coming. And it, this is not what I was feeling. I was sensing something positive. That is when, child of God, you need to confess that i know whose report i have believed last week i was share, i was sharing something with you, with you i'm not going to go into that and when they they gave me that bad report i said because god had already told me in the morning and that was my confession that god had said that god had said not realizing that what they have closed there was something else coming and i kept on repeating that god had already said and sometimes you have to stand on the word of god and say god had said this is what god has said and this is what i believe this is my reality hallelujah and when you keep on doing that god is bound to make sure that he will prove himself that is how god works it is not your crying it is not your wailing and it is not you sometimes we cry for nothing 
one time i was i was sharing with my sister and i was telling him i i there was something had happened and i was going to make a pity party you know a pity party when when you are praying and you are crying just, just a bit with your pain and you are like i'm not treated fairly i am not and you are doing that and you see as i sat down the very moment i sat down i had left the, the house to go and sit somewhere and do my own thing because I, I i felt i was in pain my dear the very time i sat there i began to think reminiscing the things that i think i was being treated unfairly and then beginning to cry the holy spirit just said one word to me and that tears that were coming they just dried up and that is not the first time he has done. He's done it over and over. I quite remember just recently. I, there was something there was something that was not working the way they should work. And I was just in a mess. I was walking to go to the, the shop. And I said, I'm going to, I'm, uh, out of my flesh, I said I was going to make this decision. After all, if I do this, what will happen? And then the Holy Spirit just said to me. So on the way, he said, so when you do that, what will be your testimony? When he said that, I said, look, oh, enough is enough. I'm not even going to think about it. I have prayed about it. It's enough. You said I should give you my bed. Enough is enough. That is how sometimes, and that is the attitude you should have. The very moment you hear what the word is saying concerning that situation, that challenge, just leave it in the hand of the Lord. Because you see, God, he said everything that Jesus has done, he is finished. And he said, it is finished. And it is finished. Your part is to believe what he has already completed. Your part is to obey the father. Your part is to just take the word and believe in what the word has already said. And just walk with it. Have faith with it. My dear, I'm not saying that it is easy. It takes practice. It is building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It takes knowing when he can correct you. It takes him knowing that, hey, when I tell Ajua not to do this, he will not do it. When I tell Pastor Samuel, do not go this way, he will go with. There is nothing that the Lord will not reveal to you. And he will be the first one to correct you when something is wrong. He will be the first one to prompt you and say, Jennifer, do not do it this way. Jackie, this is the way you should, you should go. This is the way you should take. And that is how the Lord deals with us. And so you see, Jacob was really afraid of his brother. But you see, it is so amazing that the fear made him make some decisions. The Bible says that he gave cattle. He, he, he took some, some certain things that he owed and he gave it to his servant. He, he, he portioned them in threes. And he said he gave them exactly what they have to say to Esau when they meet him. When you see your, 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 my brother Esau, this is what you should say to all these three people, the same thing. And he gave them each cattle, rams, and all that is in the Bible. And they went ahead of him. The Bible says in the night, in the camp, he still couldn't rest. And you see, let me, let, before I even continue... What the Holy Spirit wants us to know is that sometimes when you are going through a difficult times, don't always try to have certain solutions that comes from yourself. Even in those times, if you are not careful, you may abort what God is doing with that situation. And you will understand it as we go further. Because you see, we have the tendency of trying to find solutions when we are going through certain difficult times. When we are going through a challenging situation, we want to cook our way. It is only when we find it so difficult that we think that we have come to the end of ourselves and we don't have solutions. That is when we want to seek the counsel of God. But if in the beginning that you are finding yourself in that situation, you can ask God to help you, to give you the wisdom that you need. There are a lot of mistakes you, 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 you would not make. There was something that Jacob did not know when he was in, in, in fear. That God who had already spoken to Laban concerning him. He is the same God who was with him. It was the same God that was going to touch Esau and speak to Esau. He forgot that God had done it before. Yeah, Jesus. He had already forgotten the things that God had done for him. The Bible says in the night, 
in the camp with the people there. He took his wife after the night. He called his wife and his children. And he took them. He let them cross the river. And he took them. That just in case you go, let this one go. Let the, the other follow. That in case Esau is coming, he will meet you and I'll be behind. And when he did, the Bible says, in the night, a man, I want somebody to type, a man. Let me read that. Let me read the verse 9, the verse 9, chapter 32, verse 9. It says, and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the God which said unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred and I will deal with thee. I am not worthy of the least of the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servants. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now I am become two bands and listen to what he said on the 11 he says deliver me i pray thee from the hand of my brother from the hand of esau for i fear him lest he will come and smite me and the mother of my children so he prayed to god he says i am afraid of my brother esau but because you said i should leave my kindred and it is your word you i took you by your word oh lord sometimes when you are praying just remember the lord lord i took you by the word you said i should go and i went and so lord i am holding on to your word your word your word your word he said put me into remembrance and then this is what he said i am afraid Sometimes we go to God and we want to sugarcoat how we are feeling. We don't want to tell him exactly how we feel. We do not want to tell him what, how, you, you see, I am afraid. Sometimes I go to him and I tell him, I tell him, you are my father. I don't know how to have faith for this one. So teach me, teach my heart how to have faith. I do not, I, 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 I don't know how to handle this thing. Help me. That is exactly what Jacob did. He said, I am afraid of Esau. That he might smite me and the mother of my children. I'm taking too much time on this one. And so deliver me, I pray thee. But you see, when he did that, the Bible says that. When he took his wives and he sent them forth. The verse 24, the Bible says, And Jacob was left alone. Mm. Anytime you find yourself in difficult situations and challenges, that is the place that you are set apart. You will only be set apart when you find yourself in challenging situations. These are the times that the Lord himself wants to draw you to himself. These are the times that you will see who your friends are and who your enemies are. Do not despise your challenging moments. Do not despise your challenging situations. Do not despise those moments. You see, when he was alone and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And I couldn't stop meditating on this. There wrestle a man when he was alone. Why would the Lord send a man to wrestle with somebody who is afraid? I am already afraid. I don't even know what is going to happen when I meet my brother. I don't know what is going to happen the next day when, when I start work. I don't know whether they are going to retain me or they are going to send me home. I do not know what kind of results they are going to give me after this, 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 this symptoms that I'm having. I don't know what diagnosis they are going to give me. I don't know how I'm going to provide for my children the next day. I don't even know where I'm going to pay my rent. I don't even know how, how, how I'm going to solve this issue. I don't know how, what else I have to tell my child for him to behave. And then God sent a man to wrestle with him. 
Why wouldn't God just send somebody who would come and tell him, um, Jacob, it's going to be okay. I want you to ponder on that question. He, God would have simply sent his angel to come and say, Rhoda, take heart, it's going to be well. He could have easily sent an angel to say, Shela, do not fear, do not be afraid, for I am with you. He could have easily said, Mami Fosuya, do not worry, for I have already taken care of it. But no, God did not do that. What God did, he sent a man to wrestle with Jacob. Have you ever, you have been reading, have you ever thought why? Pastor Tadi, have you ever thought why the Lord will send a man to wrestle with Jacob in the time of fear? Jenny. Because you see, fear, it is never and it will never ever be of God. Before God would address everything or any situation, the first thing that he tackles is fear. If you want to receive anything from God, do not entertain fear. There is a difference between confessing your fear to God and letting him help you deal with it or taking away from you and then you nursing that fear. The Bible says he wrestled because you see, Jacob then did not know who God has made him. You do not know you do not know who God has made you. If you only knew who God has made you, there are certain things that comes your way you will not be afraid. If you know what God has placed in the inside of you, there are certain things that when it happens to you, all that you need to do is let those things work together for your good. And how would you do that? This is what happened when the, when, the, when the man wrestled with him. He says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. He says, the, the man who was wrestling this time around, the Bible had not said anything about who the, who, what kind of man Jacob was wrestling with. But the 25 says, when the man realized that he could not prevail over Jacob, he touched his tie, the hollow of his tie. Even then, he was still fighting him. A man that was afraid of his brother, yet he could fight and wrestle. If you are not challenged, you wouldn't know what kind of strength and what kind of wisdom and what kind of things that God has endowed you with. It is in the fire. It is when you are being purified. That is when you can know the kind of gem you are. What kind of mineral, spiritual mineral that God has placed in the inside of you. If you are not purified, if you have not gone through the fire, if you have not smelled what it is that the challenges of life can do to a man there are certain things in the spirit dimension you cannot touch because it takes a man who has been purified by god for them to see certain dimensions of god the bible continues to tell us this and he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let you go, except thou blesses me. You see, aside knowing your strength and the things that are inside of you, there is a position, there is a position, there is a position, there is a dimension that your pain and your challenge and your struggle has to bring you into for you to be receptive of what God wants to do in your life. If you are not careful, you will let the pain blind you of the things that you need to take and receive from God. 
Because you see, God never wastes a battle. God never wastes any challenge. He never wastes any situation that has caused you, that has taken certain things out of. He never wastes any of these. When you look through the Bible, when you look through scriptures, it is these same things that work together for Joseph's good. It is the same people, the same challenges that work together for Paul's good. It is the same experiences, those painful experiences that gave them the passion and the compassion to reach out to people. But you see, until Jacob pressed in, until he wrestled, and then the angel said, what was your name? My dear, the only time the angel came there to change Jacob's name. That was his mission that night. For him to come and wrestle with the man. For him to tap into who he really is. If he hadn't wrestled with the man, if he hadn't wrestled with the man, and we know that that is the Lord, if he hadn't wrestled with him, there was no way he could have known. You see, let me even read it. He said this. He said in the verse 30, he said that, I and Jacob called the name, the place, the name of the place Fanel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Hallelujah. If he hadn't wrestled with the man, and we know that was an angel of the Lord. If he hadn't wrestled with him, he wouldn't have known that he could prevail over, over an angel. How, how can a mere man prevail over an angel? Throughout the Bible, I have not seen it. It was only Jacob. And his name was changed. I am just here to tell you, as crazy as it might sound, whatever situation that you are going through, whatever challenge that you are going through, the Lord is here, is, wants us to know. What he wants us to know tonight is that those things are not meant to harm you. Those things are not yet to make you feel belittled. Or those things are not yet there for it to make you paralyzed. But it is there for you to know who you are in me. Who you are in God. What God, the things that God has placed in the inside of you. It is there for you to know that in the kingdom... What God has placed on you, the anointing that you possess, it can be only be, be, be seen or, or touched or be tangible when you wrestle. And when you have done that, then you can say, as Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 verse 24, and they glorified God for me because of my life. They give glory to God. This is what the, Lord, the, word, the word of the Lord that he wants us to know tonight. The situations that I allow in your way is not meant to destroy you. It is not meant to, to break you. It is not meant to, to frustrate you. But it is meant to purify your life. It is meant to bring you to another stature in me. It is meant to reveal who you truly are, a prince of God. And from today, your name shall not be called Jacob, but or called Israel. And until Jacob allowed the angel to go, there was no way he could have left. Until you allow it, it cannot happen. And that is what God has placed. That is why he gave you dominion. That is why he gave you power. And he said, you are seated far above principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. In Christ. So if your life is hidden in Christ. There is nothing. It seems like it is stretching your peace. It seems like it's just going to cause discomfort. But all that they are doing, they are like a shadow. They are not real. The only thing that should be in your reality, the only thing that should be real with you is the word of God. What God had said in his word, the things he has said, he's spoken concerning you, the rema, the prophecies, the things he has said to you in your closet, in your prayer time, 
They said the promises he has said concerning your life. That should be your reality. And when you keep on confessing them, when you keep on living them, when you keep on ordering your life in holiness and in obedience to the counsel of God, your life will never be the same. So I'm ending tonight letting you know that he that lives in the inside of you, he is more, he is stronger, he is mightier, and he is a faithful God. So there is nothing that will come your way that he will not use it for your good. So tonight I want you to give it to him. We're going to pray for a few minutes. I want you to say that, Father, I repent of, no, um, of every unbelief. If there is any situation that I have not been believing you, today I choose to believe your word over every situation. And I am going to trust you, knowing that you are working everything for my good, because you love me and I am in your purpose. So let's begin to thank God for his word that has come to us tonight. And let us pray that, Lord, let your will be done. From today, I change my confession. From today, I forgive, forgive my unbelief. From today, I am going to, I'm going to walk in faith and not by sight. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the manifestation of your presence and your power. We give you praise and honor. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are working it together for our good because we are in your purpose. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. in the mighty name of jesus i give you praise and honor thank you for your word in Jesus' mighty name and amen and amen and amen Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight and we thank you for your word. You said you do not send your word void, but it comes to accomplish the purpose on which you have sent it. And so we thank you for you releasing your word unto us. I pray that for uh, the reason why you sent your word tonight, O oh Lord, let it accomplish that purpose into in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I commit each and every soul at the sound of my voice, those that heard your word. I pray the Lord you increase their faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Any unbelief, I come against every spirit of unbelief in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that let the prophetic words that you have spoke, spoken over your children, let it start manifesting in Jesus' mighty name. Whoever is going to believe your word that you have spoken unto us, let there be signs and miracles following them in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for promotions. I thank you that when the children of the world, they are saying we do not know what to do there is a casting down let we let us say there is a lifting up for the children of light in Jesus' mighty name bless the work of the hands of your children in Jesus' name father I thank you I thank you I thank you for what you are doing in our midst I give you praise and I give you all the glory as we are going to begin our program tomorrow i pray that let your presence be manifest within us in Jesus' mighty name we want to see your glory because you have called us to yourself and so we know that as we are coming to meet you again our lives will never be the same i thank you for what you are doing and i give you all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name have we prayed with thanksgiving amen and amen and amen amen Amen. God bless you, Daniel. It's good to see you. 
my love to your daughter happy birthday to her for me and auntie kati god bless you for joining in shella god bless you for staying with me tonight may god bless you and bless the work of your hand may you find favor in his sight and in the sight of of all others around you may your expectations be never cut short in jesus name jackie god bless you god bless you may, may that man come quickly i have to come for your wording so please quick in jesus name as my 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 name rhoda god bless you says for always being with me wherever i go you are supporting me thank you god bless you and my sister um stella god bless you for sticking with me tonight and there's another person i really want to see your name uh, but i seem can't seem to find your name but hey god sees you and i appreciate you You're always with me so i need to i need to find your name some way somehow and but i'll find it and send you a message god bless you mama esther god bless you for being with me and please as i said earlier our program for tomorrow and friday and Sat uh, saturday please don't miss this program for anything because i promise you you are going to be blessed you are going to be blessed your life will be i believe that god is calling us for instructions telling us exactly what to do and where to go so do not miss this it is going to be a blessing to invite somebody share our broadcast share our devotionals and as you are coming prepare your seed whatever you want to sow just sow it to into their lives whatever we give is going straight to them it will be a blessing because i believe in the anointing he's my spiritual mother i know i know her she has she she has been a tremendous blessing in my christian work and still is and so um i know that as she i was even surprised but god said that is the woman these are people that i want you to deal with and i told them and they they responded so it made me know that indeed god was in it and it's a visual program real of hope uh we've just i just started this seven months ago and i just can't believe what god is doing with this and just being faithful and being obedient to what he has commissioned you to do you see the results and you know that indeed you had right and so i believe that god is going to do something within within us these three days with these women of god coming our way and it's going to usher us into another dimension i believe that strongly in my spirit that after this program all of you will bear witness that this ministry is going to go to another dimension i'm not going to open church please but it's it's what god has placed in my care to do to be a blessing to his word and so I believe that it's going to open another other streams because there are a lot of programs that I, I have planned. God himself has inspired and I've written them down. So I believe that it's going to propel me to yet another, another phase of this ministry that I'm doing. And it's all to be to strengthen the body of Christ. So all of you are going to be able, some of you will be in the and you're also going to let your experiences be a blessing to other people because some of you the there's the scars that you have they are they are like crowns and mantles in the spirit and people need to be encouraged that if i went through it and i've come out strong i know that you too can go through it and it's a testimony that would also encourage somebody so yes let us get ready it's to 9 9 p.m and 8 pm gmt prompt we're going to pray we're going to do praise and worship like a normal service and then we invite the speaker so just be here and support and also come prepared to receive of the lord because i know god is going to speak to us and the last um announcement is that my youtube channel real of hope i only have 52 subscribers and i'm praying that I can get a hundred if i get a hundred subscribers it's easy for me to do a live stream from facebook to youtube so if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel in wheel of hope this is how there's another set of people that comes on youtube they don't like coming to facebook and this is the word of the lord some people want to have to hear 
but how can they hear if it is not being preached so i'm just asking I, I'm, I'm i'm practically begging that if you can if you can if it's just subscribe to our youtube channel you don't necessarily have to go there so that i can also do a live broadcast on youtube and people can also listen to what the spirit of the lord is saying to us so please if you have not subscribed it's real of hope as the real of hope broadcast and then just search for us and subscribe to our youtube channel so that we can also send the message there as well and it's going to be a blessing to many so thank you very much for staying with me god bless you i appreciate you too much I wouldn't be here if you had not always come here to support me. So God bless you. And I know God knows in my heart that I appreciate you all. Some of you have been faithful. And God will bless you according to your faithfulness. So I love you with the love of the Lord. Let's meet here tomorrow. And let's worship God in the beauty of holiness. I love you, but God loves you more. So have a blessed evening. And keep on praying and before you sleep read Genesis chapter 32 it's going to blow your mind I love you Shalom <laughs>